In this tutorial we're going to take a look at the navigation display or ND. You'll notice I've got the aeroplane slewed above Sydney Airport so we're not moving. Over here on the left is ground speed of the aircraft, zero at the moment, the true airspeed which is only indicated above 100 knots. Underneath is the wind, on the left we have the degrees and on the right we have the strength in knots. You'll notice that the aeroplane is heading 330 degrees magnetic and this arc represents the compass. Zero here is zero or 360 degrees and we only show the top two digits so this 30 is actually 300 degrees, 33 is actually 330 degrees. Each of these large graticles here is 10 degrees and we have small ones in between, they're 5 degrees. I'm just going to turn the heading bug here on the mode control panel and you'll notice that heading is indicated with a magenta dashed line and the bug sits outside the top arc. If I just turn the bug back to 330 degrees again you'll see it fits under this top triangle here so that's a good indication of how accurate you are flying. I'll just move the bug out of the way again. Our triangle down the bottom here is the aircraft we're at the top of the triangle here, so that's us just there. This grey line in the centre is the range of this display. 5 nautical miles halfway up and 10 nautical miles to the top. So all around this arc here is representing 10 nautical miles. Now I can change the range out to 640 nautical miles. What I'm going to show you next is how that's used in practice. Now if I press the station button or press the S key we can see the letters STA for station in cyan on the bottom left and we can see a symbol in green here. This is called a VOR and DME. Now we have SY to the bottom right telling me that this is the Sydney VOR. DME stands for Distance Measuring Equipment and we can then determine using this DME setting how far we are from this particular VOR station. If I increase the range you'll notice that as I zoom out on the display other stations come into view. So we're now looking at a range of 640 miles around the aircraft. Notice here over on the right there's one called LH and I'll just spin, spin the aircraft around it's actually LHI, that's Lord Howe Island off the coast of Australia. Now there's no VOR with this station, so that's why the symbol in the middle is missing. It's just DME. So you, you cannot fly in on a VOR radial, but you can actually work out how far you are from that station using DME. So I'll just put the aeroplane back to this position now. We'll just zoom back in. Now there are two types of VORs. There are high VORs and low VORs and above 160 nautical miles range we no longer see the low VORs and the high range VORs come into view. So these are long distance transmitters from these VORs. You'll also notice that we have some grey dots here. These are NDBs. Now these aren't in the real aircraft but they have been included in this simulation just to make uh, life a little easier for you. So let's just zoom out again. I'm going to turn the aeroplane around to 330 degrees now and I'm going to bring up two displays, one on the bottom left and one on the bottom right here. The navigation system in these aeroplanes consists of two radios, NAV1 and NAV2 and we can display navigation radio 1 here on the left or navigation radio 2 here on the bottom right. So I'm going to select navigation radio 1 as the VOR and you'll notice it says VOR left. Underneath we have SY which means Sydney so I know that this VOR or this radio navigation aid has been tuned to nav radio 1 in the aircraft and the DME, the distance measuring equipment, is telling me it's 8.2 nautical miles to that station. So at the top of the triangle that's us. Up here to Sydney is 8.2 nautical miles. So if I just alter the scale again, you can see here that there's 10 nautical miles, 5, 7.5, so roughly 
8 nautical miles to the station. You'll also notice that there is a bearing indicator here at the top which is pointing to the station. If I alter the heading of the aircraft this indicator will tell me where the station is. If I line these two stations up, oh, sorry the, uh, the bearing pointer and Sydney VOR and I fly a heading of 344 I'm going to intercept the Sydney VOR exactly. Now let's just position the aeroplane out to the right a little bit and we'll just get a little bit closer. That's fairly good. And you can see now that if I position the aeroplane onto a heading of 298 degrees, again we'll be flying over the top of the Sydney VOR. So that's a very handy reference at the top of the system there. Now there are more uh, functions with the VOR on the navigation display. A little bit more complicated uh, so we're going to leave that to the next tutorial. If I select VOR right you'll notice at the bottom right here no VOR has been tuned on Nav Radio 2 and so there is no display here. What I can also display down the bottom left and bottom right are the ADFs. ADF stands for Automatic Direction Finder and these things consist of a needle, much like this green pointer up here, and they point to a radio navigation aid called an NDB or a non-directional beacon. So those non-directional beacons are displayed here with these little dots. 347 has been selected and tuned in to the ADF on the left, so ADF tuner 1, and on the right we have ADF navigation radio number 2 or ADF right tuned to a frequency of 392. Now you'll notice here that there's a pointer, a bearing. I'll just move the heading indicator out of the way. This one is very similar to the VOR but it's cyan representing the ADF and I know that this frequency is the frequency for Richmond. So you can see from the tip of the aircraft here following a line up to the bearing here's the pointer right over the top of the Richmond NDB. Similarly, if I look over here to the right, we have the double pointer which indicates this ADF. So single line for the left ADF, double line for the right ADF, it's the same with the VOR. And I'll turn the aeroplane around a little bit more and increase the range. I actually, I'm actually going to move the aeroplane because when I increase the range those uh, NDBs disappear. And again I can see the Calga NDB and I'll turn the aeroplane so that the blue bearing indicator, the, the cyan bearing indicator is positioned in front of us. So if I fly a heading of 358 you can see here I'm going to fly directly over the Calga NDB. So I'm just going to go and take the aeroplane up to that NDB going to get fairly close now and you'll notice that I'm almost on top of it and the bearing indicator swings as we go over the top and we can see we have the point, different pointer which is pointing uh, behind the aeroplane showing us that we have actually passed the navigation aid. So there are two different bearing indicators on this display. Here it comes swinging around. So that is the two indicator I'll turn the aeroplane around, that's another way to do it. And this indicator is showing that uh, the NDB is behind us. You'll also notice that we have the Richmond ADF indicator here telling us that Richmond is actually behind us. So if I slew the aeroplane backwards we'll come up to the Richmond NDB and you'll see that that indicator will also swing when we get close. Now the thing with NDBs is that there are no distance measuring equipment associated with them and so therefore you don't actually know how far you are away from that navigation aid. So there we are, there's the Richmond NDB and I just parked the aeroplane in front of it looking at the triangle in the lower part of the ND and there's the tail of that uh, ADF there. So you can see very, very good system to have two ADFs on the navigation display. I can turn those off or I can select the VORs. 
Let's have a look at some of the other functions on the navigation display. We can display stations as you've already seen. These are the VORs and the NDBs. I'll just turn the stations off and we can display waypoints. Now waypoints are fixes on longitude and latitude anywhere around the globe and we can program these waypoints into the flight management computer and fly between any of them. They're also used in departures and arrivals at airports. I'll just change the scale a little bit. Each of them have names so it's very simple to uh, remember for the pilots. Again when we get to 80 nautical mile range the displays disappear when uh, waypoints are selected to declutter the display. So we'll just bring it back there so you can have a look. We can also overlay stations. You'll notice the station indicator has come up here and if I move the aircraft over to the right here you see we have the Sydney VOR and we also have the waypoints displayed as well. So I'll turn off the stations, turn off the waypoints now I can turn on the airports. Airports are represented by a cyan circle and here's Sydney YSSY and the ARPT indicator here on the left for airports. And I can zoom out to 640 nautical miles and I'll turn the aeroplane so it's roughly heading north and you can see that because we are parked over Sydney Airport this is the east coast of Australia up to 640 nautical miles. So those are the basic functions of the navigation display. This display can actually show you four different views and in the next tutorial we'll be looking at those in more detail.